The Bull Armory SAS TAC 4 and quarter may be the best mix of performance, options, and price when it comes to a double stack 1911, or more commonly referred to as a 2011. This new 2023 model has shaved approximately six ounces off of the weight, making it a little bit easier to carry around all day, even inside the waistband, while providing an ultra stable and smooth operation during rapid or slow fire. And it does all of this while coming in several hundred dollars cheaper than its main competitors. Welcome back everybody. So we're gonna get right into the range performance of this Bull Armory SAS2 TAC four and a quarter. But honestly, it's a double stack 1911 that runs like a Banshee. So what's not to love, right? But real quickly, we have got to give the love of the sponsor of today's video on the TAC four and a quarter from Bull Armory. And that is gonna be HRT Tactical. HRT Tactical makes those soft goods for your hard lifestyle. It is my chosen plate carrier and they now have their new ARC belt system out, which is super low profile and super lightweight. If you are in need of hardcore gear for your life, whether it's flat range, duty, or some hardcore LARPing out there, check out HRT Tactical. So out on the range, I started off pretty slow, just kind of getting to know the Bull Armory TAC SAS four and a quarter, just pressing that trigger, getting some shots off, seeing how it was gonna run, how the trigger felt, how the slide was gonna feel, how the recoil impulse was gonna feel, all those basic things that you do when you get a new pistol. And then just a little bit of seeing how accurate the thing was from those regular pistol distances. Now it did take me a little bit to get used to it, especially the trigger, since I've been firing a lot of striker fired stuff, just coming way too far off of it. Getting a little bit of trigger freeze, you know, even though the 1911 trigger is amazing. So I had some stutters, some trigger freezes, some stuff like that until I kind of just got used to how the gun was gonna run overall in the range with not only regular ball ammo, but self-defense ammo as well. And once I kind of thought I had a good feel for it, I started to run the thing from concealment, just some draws, some basic drills, build drills, some transition drills, just to see how the thing was gonna feel and function, drawn it from an appendix rig. I ran this from a priority one holster, which was provided to the channel to test this pistol out. It's a very nice setup, and if you're interested in one for your bull, you can check them out. Now this is a double stack 1911, but it actually conceals very nicely for what I would consider a full-size duty pistol. I made sure initially when I tested this, I didn't have a light out front or any additional weight, just the optic, because some people like to see how the thing is gonna recoil directly from the factory. But once I was comfortable with how this thing was running, I went ahead, threw on the Streamlight TLR1HL, slapped on my duty belt, and I just went to work running drills. Now I will say the recoil on this thing is extremely nice and controllable. That slide feels like it is on ball bearings and the overall feel of the pistol in the hand during the cycle of operation was top notch. The action is super smooth and it is fast. I could only imagine some competitive shooter people out there that can really put the hammer down on something like this and run it far faster than I can. Now, whether I was running 115 grain ball, 124 grain ball NATO, or defensive ammunitions like G2, Gold Dot, or Critical Duty, I did not notice a big difference due to the pistol's overall size, ergonomics, weight, and just the controllability that's built into the design. Now, when it comes to the initial presentation, just bringing that pistol up on target and then transitioning from one to another, it's obviously a little bit easier because I had my RMR in here. However, the included factory blacked out sights are plenty to get you started out on the range until you choose whatever optic you wanna go with. But since this thing is a very deep cut optic platform, I figured why not just run it with the RMR since it's an optic ready pistol. I know some people in the audience don't wanna see anything on it, but it's literally designed to have that thing on it. Once I got really comfortable with it, I kinda of started to push myself and go a little bit faster because 
1911 trigger and the angle started to feel a little bit more at home. And I pretty much pushed myself to the limit since I haven't been firing a lot of 1911 stuff out there. And I did have a couple of good flubs that we'll talk about here in a minute. Now for all my viewers out there that want to know about the accuracy of the bull tack four and a quarter, unfortunately due to the heat in Arizona, I lost or did not actually record all the long range footage because my camera overheated while it was recording, which means I got none of it. But I'll do a short or a reel or something, but I took this everywhere from 25 to 150 yards with a four and a quarter inch 1911 double stack. So this thing is extremely capable. We can see how far away the target is again, all the way over there. You can see from the back of me, you can see we've walked completely up in there. Um, quite honestly, if I hit this, I'll be surprised. Nobody's cheating. We got no sights on that gun. Nice and slow, see if we work on the fundamentals, if we can get at least one hit out here with a few rounds. That was to the right. Okay, it was on the third one. I'm gonna call that good. I don't even wanna try it again because I wanna end on a good note. Again, I'll do a reel or a short or something so I can get that out to you later, but I wanted to get the video out. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the longer range footage that I like to put in when it comes to testing a new pistol. So forgive me, but let me know how far you want me to try for down in the comments below. All right, who wants to see some range flubs, right? So I swear to God, my fingers were banana peels out there. Uh, and it's been a while since I've run 1911s, but I was just all thumbs getting some of the magazine exchanges done. So uh, we'll cue some circus music. That's called a flow. But after that, I did redeem myself and got in a couple of really good ones as well. Now on a serious note, if you guys love you some range flubs, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And not only to this channel, but to all of the other 2A content creators that you watch, because it really does not only make a huge difference personally and professionally for me, but it helps out the community as a whole. We have got some really good victories going on in the 2A right now. And the more people out there listening, watching, commenting, and the bigger our group gets, we won't get silenced and we'll keep having some of those big wins. And if you are subscribed, just double check because things get weird around here. Round count wise, I'm sitting right around 400. Now out of that 400, I did have an issue. I had one failure to feed with some DRZ ball ammo and I'm gonna roll that in here so you guys can check it out. Had one right there. Um, I might have overloaded that mag, but we'll go ahead. Get rid of that round. Casing looks okay. Might have caught a little bit right there on that feed ramp. We're gonna get rid of that one. Let's do that again. All right, so even though I have had several failures on that DRZ ammo lately, everything from bad primers to cases that were too long or too short, or bullets that were literally jammed into the casing already right out of the box. To me, that looked like a kind of a break-in tolerance stacking thing. What I mean by that is these mags were meant to hold 18 rounds. So if you go ahead and you load this thing and then you plus one that mag, jam it in there, it is super tight. So to me, when I pressed out and I ran that first shot, it looks like that was in the first, I think, 100 rounds, 150 rounds, maybe something like that. It just looked like it got stacked up on tolerances and that round didn't want to feed. Hit that feed ramp and kind of stuck. Um, I've had that happen a lot with 1911s over the past, I don't know, 15 years of my life or so on that first couple hundred rounds. Uh, not completely unusual and since it was only one, it's really not a big deal to me. But again, it happened. You get to see it, so 
you be the judge. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the differences on the Bull Armory from other 2011s or 1911 style pistols because these are things you are going to need to know. First up, let's talk about the magazines. So the magazines on this Bull Armory are proprietary, but there are other companies out there like MBX that are making mags, so you can get them pretty readily available. But be aware, 2011 mags are definitely not as cheap as most of the polymer stuff out there, like a Glock where you can get a mag for like 20 bucks or even a, a Magpul mags for like 10 or 11 bucks sometimes. These things are gonna cost you like 70 to 90 bucks a piece. And when it comes to all of these differences, I was actually able to get on the phone with the people over at Bull Armory and ask them a lot of questions. And I mean like Bull Armory proper over in Israel, a uh, huge time difference, but I was able to get a lot of questions answered on why they did what they did with these pistols. Now, these ones were specifically designed for 2023 based off of US feedback and specifically a lot of competitors US feedback because Bull Armory is huge in the competitive shooting world. The next thing that is a little different is the frame. So the frame on the Bull Armory is proprietary because it has much longer rails on there to give it more durability, stability, and reliability, and a little bit of a more solid feel out on the range. The optic cut on here is about as deep as you can go before you're gonna end up impacting the glass on something like the RMR with the slide there. Uh, there is a ported version of this out there. This one still has the slide windows, but it is not the ported version. And the reasoning for that is even with a heavier optic, it's going to run reliably. So those two slits missing out of the slide that make those windows are basically about the weight of an RMR. So that is the reason why they did it. If you look out front on this thing, you would have noticed that it is a bushingless barrel and it has a tooled guide rod. So if you want something toolless, you're gonna have to buy your own. Well, those are the things that you need to know, but there are some really nice touches and things that you're gonna want to know when it comes to the bull armory as well. And the biggest one for me is that generous but not overly huge magwell. Now, I am a huge fan of magwells when it comes to pretty much any pistol, and this one just does it for me. It's got outstanding grip texture all the way around it, that sandpaper style, aggressive yet not abrasive, the front strap, the back strap, all of the controls are just perfectly machined to fit the hand right. The hammer is rounded off and it's easy to thumb over draw it when you're getting it out of a concealment position and it doesn't get hung up on your clothing. The safety and how it's chamfered and textured and it's just such a comfortable fit with the web of your hand up on it. The slide stop is textured all the way down it and just the right size, giving you a little bit of traction. You get a very nice double undercut on the trigger guard. Even the sights are chamfer cut and machined to make holstering and unholstering a little bit smoother. And that's just nice. And the rear sight on it is Glock cut. So if you want something different, you got a ton of options when it comes to rear sights. Now, of course, the trigger is phenomenal, right? It's a 1911. But to really appreciate it, we've got to take a look at it up close and do some trigger pulls. Do a good trigger check on the bull four and a quarter here, but we've got to check out what it comes with, right? So you're going to get this nice gray and red carrying case with the bull, flip it open. Plenty of room for the extra mags over here. Little flap to care for the gun so it doesn't get scratched up by any additional magazines. You will get obviously your pistol. That is the priority one holster that I got for the video. Then you're going to get your bag with your traditional cleaning kit, your couple tools in there. It's going to have your optic plate and the uh, wrenches for that. And then your chamber flag. And then you can organize this bag however you wish. So we will go ahead and do away with this and move on with the video on this tack four and a quarter, which you can see is just not only a heck of a good looking firearm, but just exceptionally well machined all the way around. Look even on the sights, how they've chamfered those off in the front. So good stuff right here, but let's go ahead and check the trigger. So your typical back strap safety and your little bit of mush on the 1911 trigger right there. So we'll take that off. There is your wall and it's just a break. Um, absolutely fantastic how it feels. Pretty short reset right there, very tactical. There is some adjustment in here on this trigger. So overall, it is just very well. Now they say three to three and a half pounds here. So we're gonna put that to the test. We're using the mechanical gauge because the electronic one just seems to be reading weird. Oh, I always do that when it comes to 1911. You got to hold that safety. Always do that. 
Okay, there is the brake. Almost dead nuts at three pounds, maybe, maybe one ounce under. So like two pounds and 15 ounces. That's pretty light. So we'll give it three pulls here. All right, so that one was dead nuts on three pounds right there. As long as we don't get anything weird, this will be the last one. All right, so right there, dead nuts at three pounds again. That is just an exceptional feeling trigger for what is a really well-priced double stack 1911 right there. All right, now for my people that need some of the specs, there are some things that are definitely important to know when it comes to the basic specs here. The frame is going to be forged aluminum. It's gonna have a polymer lower grip module. That's how they get those big double stack mags in there. Stainless steel slide and barrel. The RMR plate is what you get with it right now, but they're offering other plates very soon if they're not already out. The unloaded weight is 27 ounces. It's a big hammer fired gun, but that's not much heavier than say like a Glock 17. You got front and rear serration, texture all the way around it where you want it. Multiple slot pick rail for all of your light, mini bayonet needs out front. And for the rest of my fans, the spec army out there that needs to hear that music, got something for you. <laughs> Good stuff, right? So is there anything I would change on the bull army? This is really going to be nitpicking, especially for the price point hearth. But there are a couple of things that I would just love to see if it were actually possible. And the first thing is going to be I would love to see a textured magazine release. Uh, the one that's on here is just slick side because it's got a threaded groove in it. So you can actually put an extended one on there. But I think it's really enough. I would just like to see a flat pad on there with some texture. And I think that would be good to go. The only other things I could beg for at this price point would be a flush fit crowned barrel. I think would just look beautiful. And then a toolless guide rod. So I don't have to use that little tool out on the range when I do something wrong to it. But really at the price point, I think this thing is like $17.60 as of today. Uh, that is a lot for the performance feel and the function of this thing, especially when you talk about ones that are outfitted just like this are usually right around 2,500. So it's an exceptional value for what you're getting right out of the box, but nobody gets a pass on the channel, right? If there's something that I think could be a tiny bit better, I'm going to nitpick a little bit, but that's really the best I got. So taking all that stuff into account, I think the SAS two tack four and a quarter from Bull Armory is about the most options and the most aggressive price for the performance you can really get without a company having to cut corners on either the manufacturing process, the materials, or just not fitting the thing properly, which if you do not fit a 1911 or 2011 properly, it is not gonna function very well. Trust me, it's been tried by a lot of people and a lot of people have not gotten it right. However, Bull Armory killed it on this one. And one thing I can tell you for sure is uh, this is going to be staying in my collection for a very long time. Now make sure you tell me your thoughts down below, not only on the Bull Army four and a quarter, but if you haven't seen that three and a quarter ultralight, that thing was nasty. Make sure you subscribe, like, share all that good stuff down below because it is a huge help to the channel. Massive thank you to all of my patrons out there. You guys are such a huge support structure. And that big giveaway is going on right now. So if you're a Patreon, get over there and make sure you sign up for what you want because there's a lot of cool stuff. For the rest of you, keep doing it out on the range. Have some fun out there. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. I will see you all on the next one.